Hey folks, that comes from an uh, IU Insider and Apple Star. Uh, a little bit of a change up, I guess, change of pace today. Haven't done a video for the channel in a little bit. I've been taking some some downtime. Um, obviously, with this is pretty much the quietest time of year from a basketball perspective, a football perspective. You've got the portal going. Uh, we still, you know, I think there's. It feels like there's some some things firming up around maybe Indiana filling maybe one more, maybe two more, but at least one more scholarship. Um, <clears throat> Out of the portal, a lot of smoke around Langdon Hatton, uh, the development transfer. Football added C.J. West, who was, he was considered one of the best out-and-out defensive tackles in the portal. Um, he played the last, I think, two years or maybe even three years at Kent State. Um, obviously a position of massive need for Indiana football. You know, They added D'Angelo Pons and a couple other interesting pieces in the back end. In the secondary, they really need – Probably still need to firm up the tackle rotation a little bit more, although they'll also get healthier with some guys like James Carpenter, <coughs> excuse me, back from uh, off-season surgery once they hit summer workouts and then fall camp. But I'm um, going to set that to one side for today and talk about uh, softball and baseball. Um, for those who don't know, uh, I guess we'll start with softball. They are in the midst of the Big Ten Tournament. Um, Indiana obviously had a very, very good season last season. And even with some transfers, uh, that is not really abated. They're top 50 in the RPI. They're 37 and 17 overall. Um, again, I'll pull up the, uh, the, the big 10 softball tournament bracket, um, as, as we're talking here. Um, but they've got, they beat Purdue in game one yesterday. They will, and they're not actually just in a, a <clears throat> couple hours. They'll face Northwestern. That's a Northwestern team that has, I think, has not lost a series in like two years. Um, so, I mean, not only are they the number one overall seed, uh, you know, if you want to talk about like where they are from a, a national perspective, they're 28th in the RPI. So, very robust. I think they may be the highest ranked Big Ten team in in national softball RPI. And for those who don't know. RPI is m much closer to kind of the end-all, be-all in softball and baseball than it, than it ever was like in, in basketball um, in terms of just sort of like the weight that the selection committee will place on it when it comes to both selection and seeding. So Indiana having a pretty solid RPI again, top 50. Um, you know, I, I, there, there aren't a, a ton of projections for – the, the baseball or softball tournament fields, but the ones I have been able to find on the softball side have Indiana in as an at-large bid. I think it's fair to say, you know, a, a win against Northwestern, and I mean, that would <laughs> that would probably solidify some things for the Hoosiers. But even without that, I, I wouldn't be stunned if Indiana was, was kind of, you know, in this field, maybe in this field comfortably, although – Again, I'm not going to sit here with softball or baseball, which I've covered a little bit more of down the years. And even still, I'm not going to sit here and sort of make, you know, elite pronouncements or, or, or um, you know, overly knowledgeable pronouncements that I understand completely the, the selection process. The other thing to say about Big Ten softball that has not always been true Big Ten baseball is Big Ten softball, you know, th there is a robustness to it. I mean, Northwestern's really good. Michigan's really good. Um, you know, this season, Nebraska has been very good. Um, you know, again, this is that this has the potential to be Indiana's second year in a row in the tournament. Um, so, you know, th this stuff is is maybe sometimes a little bit, I don't know if I want to say more straightforward, but on the softball side, um, you know, it's it's not, you're not swimming upstream quite the same way, although you are still kind of fighting some of the, you know, some of the same factors in terms of warm weather conferences, the South, the West, you know, are always just going to have some advantages because you're playing outside. But the Big Ten does have a little bit more, you know, some some established programs that kind of have anchored the conference, like a Michigan, for example, um, for a number of years. On the baseball side, and, and the baseball side is a little bit more interesting because we spent a lot of a time, and just from the conference perspective, we spent a lot of time in the last 10, 15 years talking about how much base, Big Ten baseball has kind of pulled itself up, you know, that there was a time, I mean, when I was covering baseball for the the Indiana Daily Student back in the mid-late 2000s, the Big Ten was you know, comfortably a one-big conference most of the time. And what really changed that was, first of all, the 
uh, the advent of the Big Ten Network and all the money that was poured in from that started going into building better facilities, hiring more and better coaches, and, and just investing you know, more generally in, among other sports, baseball as a, um, <clears throat> as a function of, you know, being better conference wide and Indiana, obviously we've written about this at, at a number of different times. Indiana has kind of been at the, the vanguard of that. Indiana has been, you know, basically since, if you want to call this kind of the modern era of big 10 baseball, which probably sort of starts with Indiana making it to Omaha in 2013, because that felt kind of like a watershed moment for the conference. It was the first time a Big Ten team had made it to Omaha since uh, 1984. Um, you know, it, it. there have been some other factors too. Maryland and Nebraska coming in helped. Obviously, adding the West Coast teams should help and, in fact, make the conference a lot more competitive um, and, and probably difficult, I would say, for the traditional um you know, sort of Big Ten schools going forward. But but I think that um, we have talked for a long time about how the Big Ten went from kind of a one-bid league to a two-bid league, We've you know, to the point where we've even seen four and five bids at different times. And this year is, is fascinating because the Big Ten actually has nine teams, nine of its 13 teams. Wisconsin doesn't play baseball, um, for anyone who's unaware. Um, nine of the Big Tens, if I'm counting this correctly, Nine of the Big Ten's 13 teams are in, um, or maybe it's, I think it's eight of the Big Ten's 13 teams are in the RPI top 100. Michigan's 93. There's a whole cluster in the 60s. Illinois is 60. Indiana 62. Ohio State 63. Rutgers is 66. Purdue is 69. Maryland's 35. And Nebraska's 21. Um, there's even a couple more Iowa and Michigan state that are just floating around outside the RPI top 100. And, and one of the things that used to work against big 10 schools, um, in baseball was the fact that there were too many conference series where you'd be playing teams with like a sub 150, uh, sometimes even a sub 200 RPI and, you know, even winning two out of three wasn't enough because any loss to a team like that, was, you know, the, the wins would do very little for you and the losses could be really damaging um and there just wasn't enough heft and so you'd see big 10 schools have to really challenge themselves and go south and go west indiana was you know i would say about as aggressive with that as as anybody although i also think um you know dan hartleb at uh, illinois has been a, a big proponent of that i think that john anderson at uh, minnesota always pushed that pretty hard rick heller who has been at Iowa for a number of years now. Um, and I think before that, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, was at Indiana State and built a, a very successful program there that has, um, has kind of carried on even since. Um, you know, there have been a number of, of coaches and programs, and Indiana is one of them, that have really pushed a schedule tougher and in doing so try to sort of raise all boats in the conference. Um, and that's kind of finally happened where, again, you know, you look at, you know, 103 or better, you've got all but three Big Ten teams. The only three Big Ten teams out there that aren't 103 or better in the RPI are Minnesota, Northwestern, and Penn State. And even those are all in the top 150, which is, you know, if, if, for the bottom of the conference to still be all in the RPI top 150 is, is very unusual. Never mind how many you find in the RPI top 75. The flip side is at the moment, and this is kind of a sort of a victim of your own success thing a little bit for the Big Ten. If you look at like Warren Nolan's conference rankings, for example, the Big Ten is pretty much the best of the rest. You know, it's, it's always the SEC, the ACC, the Pac-12. The Sun Belt's gotten a lot better um, and has always kind of been good anyway with your, you know, your, your, your Coastal Carolinas, your Georgia Southerns, et cetera. Um, and... Uh, the Big 12 is is still pretty robust because you have the Texas schools and now you're adding, obviously, soon you'll lose Texas, but you're adding Arizona and Arizona State, two really, really good baseball schools as well um, as what all, what all you'll get from the Pac-12. Um, the Big 10 this year, I think, is sixth, is behind those, those five conferences in terms of sort of conference strength. But what's kind of happened is the Big 10 has just beat itself up a lot. And, you know, in the past... And I'm shooting this video as part of a story that I wrote about Jeff Mercer's team going to uh, 
um, going to Nebraska this weekend for a really big series. There are five teams within you know within shouting distance of a Big Ten regular season title. Illinois is thirteen and five; they lead the conference. Indiana, Purdue, and Nebraska are all twelve and six; they're one game behind. And then Iowa, which was the preseason favorite, is thirteen and eight, so they're a game and a half behind. Depending upon how you see that, they've just played more games. Um, basically. The conference, and I talked to Jeff Mercer about this, is as tight as it's been that either of us can remember um, in terms of quality teams at the top and there not being that separation of one or two or maybe three teams that you just sort of look at and say they are clearly so much better than, you know, the rest of the league and they're going to be comfortably in the tournament and now it's just a matter of shaking out, you know, who wins the league conference tournament seating, and often a lot of what's actually sort of more compelling is the race to be one of the top eight teams and get into uh, the Big Ten tournament. This year, you have a deeper conference, certainly, and the RPI of the conference, if you look at, you know, kind of the how many teams are clustered in in areas higher up the RPI rankings than is normally the case, um, you know, this is maybe as deep as the conference has been for a while, but I think the flip side is, and, and you know, it's it's sort of like a, it's like a mid-major, to use a basketball example, it's like a mid-major conference that has a bunch of teams that are somewhere between maybe Ken Palm 60 and Ken Palm 100, and they spend a lot of time beating up on each other, and ultimately none of them kind of separate with the quantity of wins necessary to convince for an at-large berth if that makes sense. So somebody will get the automatic berth and that'll obviously happen for whoever wins the big 10 tournament in a few weeks. Um, but it's almost in a sense, the big 10 is, is kind of too deep that, that, you know, it's, it's got a lot of teams that are all kind of, you know, clustered in, in sort of bubbly areas of the RPI, Purdue, Indiana, you know, possibly Illinois, um, you know, i I, I think you could look at a Maryland and feel a little bit more comfortable, certainly a Nebraska and feel a little bit more comfortable with the RPI number the way it is. But like, there's an argument that the big 10, you know, has five or six tournament worthy schools this year. And I think what may wind up happening, we'll see what the committee says about the big 10 on, on selection Monday. We'll see obviously how the season finishes out. Cause that's the other part of it. That, that's all kind of got to resolve itself. But it feels like we may wind up with a lot of Big Ten schools that are just just barely below the cut line because they've just kind of spent a lot of time. That The conference has been tough enough that nobody could get to a place where they just really asserted themselves and separated from the rest of the league. Um, it is going to be a fascinating last two weeks in the baseball, uh, in the Big Ten baseball uh, race. Illinois hosts, I think it's Iowa this weekend, and then finishes at Purdue. Indiana's at Nebraska and then hosts Michigan, which is in sixth. Tracy Smith's club, obviously, he'll be back in Bloomington for the first time. I think Michigan's 11 and 7. So they're, you know, the, in theory, they're still kind of in the, the, the conference title race, but there's a lot, there are a lot of teams between them and the top they'd have to leapfrog. But the point is, they're still kind of in that conversation. I think Michigan also plays, I think Illinois might actually play. I think Illinois plays Iowa this weekend and Michigan plays Purdue. It's either that or the other way around. The point is most of these teams are going to play each other, you know, between now and the end of the season. Almost everybody has not just a series this weekend against somebody else in that top six, but a series next weekend against somebody else in that top six. And from Indiana's perspective, this weekend is particularly relevant because it's not just about getting past Nebraska in the conference standings. Nebraska is also 21st in the RPI. That is far and away the best number in the Big Ten. The only team close to them is Maryland, which is 35th. Maryland is a team Indiana took to a three thumb on the road already this season. If they could do the same at Nebraska, and it's not going to be easy, Haymarket Park is one of the toughest places in the conference to play. But if Indiana could do the same at Nebraska, that would go a really long way to shoring up an NCAA tournament resume that probably still needs some work. Indiana had a really good start to the season, and they had that dip in the middle where I think they lost 10 of 18. They've gone eleven and five. If you throw out the um, the the tie against Ball State that I think had to be called on on account of light, but no, I think Ball State doesn't have lights on its field, and and basically they just couldn't keep playing because it was getting dark. Um, but I think they've won eleven of their either ten of their last fifteen or eleven of their last sixteen after that midseason swoon. 
I would say they probably need series wins this weekend and next weekend to feel comfortable on Selection Sunday, bar obviously some sort of deep run in the Big Ten tournament. That's always a possibility, though, as we always discuss with these things, the selection committee can't, you know, wait forever to, to place a ton of um, to place a ton of emphasis on what happens in the conference tournaments in, in any sport. So a really big weekend for IU baseball this weekend, a really big weekend for a fascinating Big Ten title race and a really big kind of week and potentially weekend ongoing for uh, IU softball. Again, the Hoosiers, I think uh, it seems like have a, a very real chance of getting back into the field um, again, which is, you know, just awfully impressive for a program that has obviously been kind of building steadily upward for a while now. So a little bit of a change of pace today. Don't know if, if, if everybody watched that kind of all the way through to the end, but um you know, truthfully, those are the those are the sports that are kind of ongoing. Everything else kind of quiets down this time of year. Sports that aren't in their seasons tend to, to send their athletes home after graduation, after the spring semester ends, and give them a few weeks if they want them away from Bloomington, away from workouts, you know, kind of self-led stuff. And, and then the, the fall sports will start bringing their athletes back sometime in either late May or early June. But this is kind of the quietest, you know, sort of chunk of the IU athletics calendar annually. And um, the, the, the two really big ones still to follow are softball and baseball because they both could very well be playing into the NCAA postseason beyond just um, Big Ten competition. So we'll leave it there. For the Indianapolis Star, I'm Zach Osterman. Thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you soon.